Hey, what's happening, Nation? It's SJ. I want to take a look at a few different offenses tonight, just kind of get your guys' opinions on it. A few of these were put out in the comments section. A few of these are just my own little brainchild. But I'm very curious to see what we end up running on Sunday. I don't think it's going to be anything too drastically different from what we have been doing. I think we're going to try to stay in the rhythm that we have been. There's going to be a few new pieces added in there, so I definitely want to take a look at them real quick. We're not going to waste too much time. We're going to go ahead and jump straight into this. If you are new to the channel, if you think about subscribing, I really would appreciate that. The main one that I saw throughout the comments that I was reading was the Raiders need to go back to the two tight end set, the old school New England offense. And I have drawn this offense up a million times, so I'm not going to spend too much time talking about it. I do want to say that I think it is due time that Foster Moreau gets more involved in this offense. We have seen what this kid has in flashes, but I want to see him start doing it consistently week to week. I think he has a real opportunity to step up and be a bigger part of this offense, especially in this Giants game, because it's going to be very similar to that Denver game to where we're keeping everything underneath. You're going to see a ton of slants. It's going to be a Foster Moreau field day again, but I really think having the two tight end set would really help, one, open up the run game, and two, give Foster the opportunity to make his impact on this game. The other player that's truly going to have to step up is Zay Jones. We are going to see a ton of Zay Jones this week and I'm honestly pretty excited about it I want to see what he brings to the table he never really had a real opportunity to be like that number one guy for us or I guess number two at this point but he's going to end up getting a decent amount of looks and I'm really hoping that he can capitalize on that he does not demand the respect that Ruggs did, so I'm curious to see if the Giants come out and try to stack the box against us. We need somebody that's going to be able to stretch that field. We ended up activating Dylan Stoner to the active roster today, which was cool to see. A lot of people have a ton of faith in this kid as far as like the ESPN talking heads. But until I see him do it at the NFL level, I'm going to have my doubts, and I'm really hoping that this kid can prove me wrong. We are going to work him into a few of the lineups tonight, but I think this two tight end set is something that we are definitely going to see a pretty good bit of on Sunday. I don't think it looks terrible, and if they do start to stack the box, at least we have the extra tight end on the field to kind of free those holes up so Josh Jacobs can feed. I have a feeling he's going to end up having a pretty damn big game on Sunday. He needs to crack that 100-yard mark at least once, and he has a legitimate shot at doing it this week, so I'm really pulling for him to step up. The next offense I want to talk about as Waller moving to the outside wide receiver position we have seen this happen a few times in the past I do not think this will happen consistently this one also came from the comments section a few people said go ahead and just put Waller as your number one wide receiver let Foster start at tight end and let everything else kind of fall into place as much as I love that and I think that would technically work I don't think you're gonna end up seeing it Waller has such a huge impact from that tight end position that I don't think you're going to see that tweaked with too many times. You're going to see him line up on the outside just as many times as you see Alec Ingold line up as the outside wide receiver. I really do like the way this offense looks on paper, but I think if we did it on a consistent basis, it would take a little bit away from the offense. This does look incredibly cool though, so I would not mind seeing this. I love having Renfro in the slot on this package, and if by some chance you did get a true one-on-one -on, -one on the outside with Waller versus a cornerback, Derek Carr is going to take that shot all damn day. I know we're going to see this, but I'm just curious to see how many times we do actually see it. But as far as Waller moving from that tight end to the wide receiver position, I do not see that happening at all. But we might secretly be onto something right here, so keep an eye on this offense, because I do like the way it looks. The next offense I want to draw up, I'm really hoping that we do see. I think this has a definite possibility of being one of our rotations on this team moving forward. And if this pans out and does work the way that I'm hoping that it does, this could end up being one of our staples making our playoff push. This is a true four wide receiver with Kenyon Drake as your running back. I think this offense could be lethal, especially with the short passing game that we're going to be running on Sunday. There's a tremendous amount of quickness and agility on the field in this lineup. I don't know what it is about this offense, but something about me really loves this one. It's extremely versatile and it's extremely fast. I guess it just kind of reminds me of one of Carr's college offenses. But this entire setup right here completely comes down to if Stoner can step up and take it to that next level. The final one I want to take a look at is just a quick goal line offense. We probably won't end up seeing it, but I really hope we do. I think it looks cool as shit. This three tight end dual running back set with Marcus Mariota as your quarterback would really throw some defenses off inside the red zone. We have a ton of power on the field. I actually had this drawn up with Alec Engel, but I thought Drake worked better just because you can always motion him out to make those passes. I understand you could do the same thing with Alec Engel, but I just feel more confident with putting the ball into Drake's hands, especially if we're in a goal line situation. But the power and deceptiveness that this offensive lineup has, I think will get teams second-guessing themselves, and that's all you need in the red zone is one person to second-guess themselves. You take advantage 
advantage of that hole and then you get your touchdown. I really think all these offenses look pretty damn good. I really just wanted to make this video just to show everybody like we still have options. We still have weapons on this offense. It's not like we're completely buried because we lost rugs. I really think this offense should be able to hold the course. Our defense has still been playing lights out. Being able to come out and roll the Giants would end up making a huge statement for this team. Even though it feels like we're making a statement every damn week that we play football this year. But that's pretty much what I have for you guys. Please hit me up. Let me know your thoughts on these offenses and whatever offenses you think we might be running this Sunday. I'm pulling chains for one of the high school playoff games tomorrow night. I'm really looking forward to it, but it's going to end up canceling out Fan Friday. But I'll be back on Saturday to do my breakdown of just who has the advantage. I love making that show and moving those little check marks around. So until next time, guys, I'm SJ, and we will catch you on the next one.